Hello, and welcome to another tutorial from Kimi Page Boutique. I'm Brooke Tannehill, and today I'm going to show you how I made this rustic geode peekaboo tumbler. As always, all the products I use will be listed in the description below, and you may even find a coupon code or two that saves you some coin. Also, come join our exclusive Facebook group where you can take advantage of upcoming freebies and giveaways that you aren't going to want to miss. So without further hesitation, let's go ahead and get started. For this design, I'm starting out with a 30 ounce straight skinny from the Stainless Depot. I'm going to take it out of the box, then I grab a 60 grit sanding block, and I am just going to be scuffing up the sides of the cup just to make sure that we're removing maybe any oils or things that might be left over from the manufacturing process. I all rem also remove the little circle metal piece and sand the bottom. Then I'm going to grab some 99% alcohol and just remove any of the debris that might be left over and then we are ready to move into the next steps of the cup. For the base coat of this cup, we are going to be using Miss Lillian's No Wax Chalk Paint. I love this paint so much that Cami Page Boutique has started selling it, so you can definitely snag some at the Cami Page Boutique website. But this color that you see right here is called Hot Pink Lipstick, and it was just the perfect color for the base coat of the glitter that we will be using. So I'm just going to come in with a cheapo makeup brush. I get these from the dollar store, and I'm just going to add one pretty even but thin coat to the bottom. Let that dry or you can use your heat gun to kind of speed up the process. And then I'm going to come in with a second coat to apply your glitter or my glitter, I guess you could say. So just like that, we let that first coat dry. And then for the second coat, I'm actually going to use a little bit of Artistry's glitter glue and then mix the paint into it. So that way you're kind of doing double duty. You're going to be adding that second coat to really give that flawless finish, but you're also adding that adhesive in there that's going to act as a wonderful way to add your glitter. So we are going to be using Flamingo from Diamonds and Dust. And when I say this is one of my favorite pinks, it is one of my favorite pink glitters out there. So I'm just going to take my time making sure that I'm getting a nice even coat on my tumbler. And since we have the glitter glue in there, it actually slows down the drying process of the paint and is wonderful for applying the glitter for this tumbler. So you can see I'm just kind of taking my time applying the paint again making sure that you have a nice even coat just in case there's any opal in the glitter you might see the inconsistencies in the base coat so once I have that all applied the way I like it I'm just going to let her rip tater chip and apply this glitter so just going in and you can see just how beautiful this glitter is I'm gonna let it dry for about 45 minutes spray seal it twice with rust-oleum clear gloss spray paint and then I'm going to go in with two coats of artist one-to-one -one fast set to make sure that it is nice and smooth. One thing I did want to show is that Artistry just released these brand new magnetic arms for their turners and I actually really like them. It makes it super easy to apply the um, arm to the turner and also if you're doing an ombre you don't have like the little, um, I don't even know what it's called, the thumb screw in the way that always gets caught on my gloves. So you can see here that I'm easily able to apply my epoxy even with a magnetic arm and it just makes the process so much easier. So if you like the magnetic arms or you haven't tried them yet definitely go give them a try they are on the artistry website and i have to say that i am very pleasantly surprised and you definitely need these in your life once your cup is all smooth, it is time to start the sanding. So I am using a 120 grit flap wheel to expose a little bit of the stainless steel on our tumbler. This just allows our next coats of epoxy to really have something to adhere to. So you don't have any instances where liquid or anything can get behind the epoxy and start to make it peel off of your cup. So I use my flap wheel and expose that little bit. And then I just use probably about 120 grit sanding block and just smooth out that rough edge so that way you don't have any pokey bits if the customer is to drink out of the top of the cup. Then I'm just going to give it a nice sanding on the sides just to make sure that it is nice and smooth. And you can see that yes, I did start with my sanding block, but it just takes forever. This is my favorite hack. I know I've showed it in a lot of my previous tutorials, but I like using my orbital sander. I rock the cup back and forth and use the orbital in the opposite direction and it really knocks down 
down any pokey bits and speeds up the sanding process and gives you a flawless finish for when you go into your final design elements. So I highly recommend this. If you don't have an orbital, you can use a palm sander, but I do like using power tools where it makes sense. Just don't do it on the bottom because it does have an, a tendency to remove your glitter and your epoxy and it's just not cute. So then I move into the bottom rim. And again, I do this just to make sure that you're getting a smooth bottom. Nobody wants something that they've paid for to have pokey bits, but you can just see how nice it is. I did go up and wash it with Dawn dish soap and water just to make sure that I removed any of the grit that's going to possibly cause bumps. And then it was time to move into the peekaboo portion of our tumbler. So this cup was made for a very specific person. They wanted a cup that kind of spoke to the fact that they had two children in sports. One, their daughter was a dancer and their son was in baseball and basketball. So I created this kind of alternating pattern to add to the peekaboo elements. And um, I gave them the decal that said chaos coordinator that you can see um, there in the middle. And I'm gonna kind of uh, show you how that comes to life because now it just looks like a big blob. But I'm just gonna remove these decals and then we're going to apply them to the tumbler and then move on to the next steps. Also, just to make this a little bit uh, easier to apply to the cup, I did remove any of the excess because that stencil vinyl can be expensive. Um, I always get it at Vinyl Fun for everyone because I found that they have the best price on it and it's the really high quality stuff. So these peekaboos are so much easier, but I'm going to remove or trim my um, transfer tape that you see here. And I will link this transfer tape down in the description below, but I'm just going to trim it to size. So that way we don't have too much um, because I found when I'm doing these peekaboos where um, the decals aren't one piece, there's a bunch of different ones, that having too much transfer tape can cause some problems. So I'm just going to cut it to size and then we're going to apply it to our decals that you see here. So the lines on this make it really easy to line it up. Um, I was on the struggle bus, so it makes it look like it took longer, but because there is that straight edge and we cut the area that goes on the cup with our Cricut, we know that it lines up. So I'm just going to apply it right there with the lines of the two tint it like I do with any of the other wraps and then just make sure that I get the transfer tape applied to the decals. And taking your time here is really going to set you up for success when you apply it to your cup. So don't try and do it too quickly, um, but this is a stronger tact transfer tape, which you want with the stencil vinyl because otherwise it does not go on the cup very well. So definitely use a stronger transfer tape and make sure that you're taking your time and that it's pushed onto the stencil vinyl very well. Otherwise, you're going to have a bunch of headaches. So I got it applied and I'm just cutting off the excess and then it's time to move on to the next step. To make this easier for us and to get everything lined up, I'm gonna use my ultimate decal guide from Cami Page Boutique. I will link it, link it down in the description below. And what you can see there is that it creates a nice line for me to reference to apply our decals. Since we already know that the transfer tape is lined up with a straight line, we're also going to do this on the cup. The other thing I'm going to do is you can see there that I marked where the center of the cup is. Then what I do is I go to my decals and even though I have the straight lines on the transfer tape, you don't know that it's actually the center. So I'm going to mark the center of the decals on my transfer tape and then I line it up with the line on the tumbler. So that way I know that I'm getting my decals perfectly centered and I don't have to apply any more um, marks to the cup. So just line it up. You know that you've got it on there nice and straight. And then we're going to tint it and apply the decals to our cup. So this is where you're going to start to see that it really matters how well you have the transfer tape adhered to your decals because otherwise this is going to be a nightmare. Um, I've used some lesser tact um, transfer tape in the past and it's just a bear to deal with. So I'm just going to take my time pushing out from the center. So you can see there, like because the transfer tape will start to wrinkle, that's just how it is. But I'm gonna push out from the center and make sure that I have all of the decals nicely pushed down. One thing I will say is 
baseballs are a pain in the booty when they're this small to weed. So we're going to reverse weed them, and I'll do that here in a second um, by actually just removing the transfer tape because the transfer tape will actually pull out um, those little tiny pieces. But just take your time, and you can see I'm really pushing down. I did not use the squeegee this time just because I really wanted to make sure that I'm pushing each individual piece down, um, but it worked really well. Once I get to the end, it is time to remove the transfer tape. Now here, what I will say is what you want to do is pull the transfer tape on itself as much as possible. What that does is it prevents the decals from pulling up and it just really nicely leaves everything in its spot. So pull it against itself. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see here, but it just allows everything to kind of stay in place. Then once I have the transfer tape removed, you can see I'm gonna come in and just fix any of the wonky areas that might've gotten pushed onto the cup, um, just because it is the nature of the stencil vinyl. And then I will just take a paper towel with some alcohol to remove that marker so that um, that line isn't on the cup forever. You can see it right here and it just comes right off. So like magic, it's gone. Nobody is ever going to know it was there. Once I was done with that, I'm just gonna give the cup a once over to make sure that none of the vinyl is lifting. And then I take this outside and I spray it with grape, gloss, Rust-Oleum spray paint and bright white. And then it's time to start distressing this cup. So the way I like to do this is I let the spray paint dry for probably about an hour before I move into this. And don't do what I did. Um, I actually set it on a paper towel and it just messed everything up. I do recommend using cloth for this process because anytime I do this with any kind of paper towel, I do get the lint on it and it just doesn't really work as well versus if I have to use some kind of cloth. So I'm using a baby blanket. Um, I picked these up actually from Goodwill. Um, then I just run them through the washing machine and reuse them. You can also use the cloth diapers or like burp ribs, burp rags. Sorry, I can't talk. Um, but I start with acetone. So acetone really does a great job of removing big pieces of the spray paint. Um, so that's why you start with that. And then once I'm happy with some of the placements, then I'm gonna come in with alcohol. But I'm just kind of picking spots every which way to remove the spray paint. Now, there is no right or wrong reason. You just want to make sure that you're leaving as much paint around our peekaboos or like our dancers or our sporting balls so that you can kind of see some detail. Granted, we will be doing an offset so it's not as important, but just take your time. Um, I like to start with this, then kind of leave it for about a half hour, and then I'll come back and see if I still like it or if I want to remove any more. Um, and I found that that really sets me up for success versus just kind of hurrying through it and then coming back and be like, wow, that kind of looks wonky. Um, I also like to make sure, just because a couple of my friends have run into this, that some of the shapes that you're revealing don't look like um, how do I say this? Uh, genitalia. Um, so make sure um, that you're looking at this from that kind of perspective. Maybe show it to a friend that has a dirty mind if you don't and see if they see anything with the little sections that you're removing. Um, and normally I wouldn't say anything, but I have had uh, several friends run into this problem. So that's why I just recommend looking at it from that perspective before you send something to a customer that may or may not infer something else. Once I'm happy with the sections that we've removed a lot of the spray paint with or the places that we wanted it to, I'm gonna come in with 99% alcohol and I am just going to clean up any of those sections that may or may not just have spray paint residue left over. So you can see there that that spot had a bunch of spray paint in it. Um, you're gonna really see it here in a second. And just by using the alcohol, it's going to clean it up and give it more of, it's still gonna look distressed, but a finished, distressed stressed look and I've also found that the alcohol exposes a little more of that color underneath and that's why I really do two colors when doing these types of cups because I like the added detail now I've even done these kinds of cups with three colors and that's even really cool um, the only thing I kind of caution against is I have tried it with metallic cups and it does work to some extent but the color in the metallic doesn't always come through and so it just kind of creates 
the not so desired look. So make sure that you choose your colors wisely um, and maybe try it on a couple of different surface surfaces before truly committing. One other thing I want to mention is I'm not just cleaning up the cup as I'm going around. Granted, that is my primary focus, but I am going to do a couple of spots where I just remove the white spray paint and expose a little bit more of the purple because the purple is really what we're trying to show here. Um, but the white gives it kind of that look that brings everything together. And I hope that makes sense. So I'm just taking my time removing the spray paint from the glittered sections that we want, but then also kind of, well, not kind of, but really taking away that white in those strategic areas where it makes sense to give it more of that polished look that we're going for. Um, because when you first remove it with the acetone, it looks like a hot mess express and that's just not what we're looking for. So right there you can see it's giving it that texture, but leaving um, or removing that extra paint that kind of makes it look like it's just not supposed to be there and just a mess all over the place. So continue just to remove it and play with it until you're happy. If you feel like, man, I need to start over, don't be afraid to. You can obviously go back out there, spray paint it and start over if you're not happy with it. There is no right or wrong with this. Just take your time, don't get frustrated, and you'll be really surprised with what you're able to create with this style of cup. Once you're happy with the distressing, I let my cups sit overnight just to make sure everything's dried and you have like the texture that you want. Then I'm going to come in with Tack It. Now I'm just using a makeup brush here and applying a nice coat over the really only the spray paint area. I don't want to apply anything where the glitter has been exposed. So I'm just going to kind of take my time and just add the glue where I want it. Now, I really chose to stay away from the very, very edge because I did want to leave that purple detail right like at the where the well, actually where the paint meets the glitter. So I'm just really staying in that white section, um, but covering some of like the streakiness up of the purple that's left over. So just kind of coming in every which way. And you do want to go over the top of your decals. We will be, again, um, doing an offset with those and um, we'll do that here in a minute. But just take your time, apply it where you want. Um, you can always just wipe it up um, if you get it someplace that you don't like. But just move your way around your cup and then I like to do two coats of Tacket. I just found that that gives me the most even coverage. So I will let this dry for about five minutes and then I will go into the second coat and then it's time to add some more sparkly goodness. So the first thing we are going to add is Fairy Kisses from Woody's Goodies. This is a beautiful mica powder and I'm just going to use a makeup brush and just go over the top of the cup just where I want to add a little bit of a subtle bling. Um, you can see just how pretty that is. It just adds a really nice pearlescence and we're going to be adding it every which way. Now, if you like just this look, you could go over the entire cup with this. Um, we're just gonna be adding a couple of other colors and other details to this. So um, I just kind of take my time and eyeball it. Um, again, this is more of a rustic kind of different element piece. I guess you could call it almost mixed media, but um, um, I started with that and then I came in with, um, I believe this is Wedding Kisses or Wedding Wishes. I'll have to list it down in the description below. But I really wanted this opal mix of glitter. This one's from Diamonds and Dust. And I liked just the little bit of amazingness, I guess is a word that we could use, that this added to the overall look of the cup. So I'm just sprinkling some on and then with the tacket, I'm just burnishing it down um, just to kind of add some, just like another detailed element to this. And I really liked how it brought the whole look together. So sprinkle it on and then you do want to burnish it so it stays into place. And then we can move in to the other pieces that we're going to be adding. Next, I wanted to add just a little bit more pink to the overall look. So this is Rose Quartz, again, from Woody's Goodies. And you can see this just adds a little bit of a different hue of that pearl essence. So I really liked it with the look of this and I'm just kind of coming in and placing it next to the fairy kisses that we had laid down before. So again, just kind of every which way and just laying it over the tacket. Um, and you can see that nice sheen in the detail it gives over the spray paints that we had been added. Now, I am not afraid to go over the glitter that we had put on this because it just kind of fills in the overall sparkle. Um, but I really liked this color with the other elements that we had added because again, it just gives it 
a whole nother look, but also pulling together all the different elements that we have already added to this cup. So add as much or as little as you like, um, but I really liked the overall color and I just thought it was perfect for this kind of design. Next up is another mica powder. This is Rose from the Peacock series, also from Woody's Goodies. And again, I'm just kind of coming in and adding this detail over the tacket method. You can see that this is a, I don't want to call it a chameleon, but it is a beautiful mica that really kind of shifts colors, even though it's white. And again, it's just giving more of that pink hue. It's a little bit different than the rose quartz, but again, it pulls the glitter together that we had already applied. And I'm just adding it every which way and really making sure to cover all of the tacket before we move on to the next steps. So again, you can add as much or as little as you like. I just really liked this color because it's just, it almost has like a little bit of a purple sheen to it too. So it was just a really, really perfect mica for this design. So again, just using a makeup brush to apply. And I just use the same makeup brush for all of the micas that we're adding. Um, I don't know if it let it mix together a little bit better, but I didn't have any issues, but look how pretty that looks. Now comes the super satisfying task of removing the vinyl. So just take your time. I like to use an X-Acto knife like you can see here. Use whatever you are comfortable with um, because literally this is something that could really mess up your cup if you're using a tool that you don't really know how to use or it's new to you um, because it could mess up the spray paints and just kind of damage your overall design. So just take your time. Um, I just, again, I use this um, X-Acto knife, just lift up the stencil vinyl and just remove the rest with my fingers. Um, this does not have any kind of epoxy product on it, so I don't have to worry about wearing gloves. It's just tack it. Um, and so I'm just going to make my way around the cup and then just make sure that all of the vinyl is removed. Um, I don't know how many times I've gone into epoxy a peekaboo and then I'm like, oh my gosh, there's another piece of a vinyl that I forgot. So double, triple check whatever you need, or you could just be a pro and get them all the first time. But that is something that I highly recommend because <laughs> I have run into that issue in the past. Once all the stencil vinyl was removed, I went into a coat of epoxy. I used Artistry's one-to-one -one fast set, and now it is time to add our offsets to the peekaboos. So here I'm just applying the outlines to the dancers and the different sports equipment or baseball and uh, basketball. Um, and don't feel like you have to get these perfect right away. Sometimes the stencil vinyl will grow on you it stretches a little bit especially when you're doing these tiny decals so get it lined up as much as possible but don't be afraid to use your exacto knife and kind of get it into place so i do the offsets with the peekaboos and then i also use this offset vinyl to apply the decal to the cup so i thought that was a nice little added detail to have this beautiful pink glitter kind of around the chaos coordinator graphic and then i also had a couple of the peekaboos kind of intertwined with that just to kind of keep the cohesiveness of the whole um, design. So I apply this part right here. I move into a coat of Artistry's um, Quick Seal. Yes, sorry, Quick Seal. Let that dry for about 45 minutes. And then I went in with three final coats of Artistry's one-to-one -one Fast Set. And this baby was done. Now it was a pain to weed that baseball, but overall, I absolutely love how this cup turned out. I hope this tutorial inspires you and I can't wait to see what you create. If you have any questions about any of the steps or information, please feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to help. As always, thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me. If you like this tutorial, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can see future videos. You can also ring the bell so you're notified of all future cup making goodies. Thank you again. I love you guys. Bye.